All right, if you got a question for coach, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get started. Christos, go ahead. Hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. Very big win. And what it means for you to have five, five straight wins, what it means and how important for you to win a, a game like that? Oh, I think we lost coach right off the bat here. Hold on. Okay. All right, can you? Yep. Good. Yep, I'm good. Right. Go ahead, Christos. Okay. Hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. Five straight win. Great, uh, great win. What it means for you that streak, and also how important for you was to win in a close game with the way that you won tonight. I I think it was uh, big. You know, when we were down, I think 17. It felt like 40. And I was just saying, you know, just we gotta just chip away, guys. You just gotta chip away, chip away. Keep it, keep it at a at a respectable number at halftime. And I thought we did. Um, and then winning the close game, we made we made some mistakes down the stretch, uh, over help for some threes and fouled fouled some drives. But you gotta just play. And we, I thought our guys did a lot. Of, a lot of guys, a lot of our. Role players were stars tonight. I thought Denny came out. He didn't. He struggled in the first half. You know, I don't know. It's playing the Lakers for the first time, playing against LeBron for the first time. But I thought in the second half he bounced back and he competed and he challenged. He got rebounds. He made some shots. Uh, and I, I thought Rui did a great job on LeBron all, the entire game when he was on him. He's a, I mean, obviously he's one of the best players ever. But he, I thought he matched up. It was good. To Yeah, let's get him a hot spot. Yeah, what a night. What a night for this to happen. Everybody get another cup of coffee. Was this picture out there too? I think it was audio only for me, but I don't know. Yeah, he, my own. he froze. He froze there for a second at, right before it went out. Oh,
you guys some good stuff there too. You did. It was awesome. Uh, Scotty, when, when did you start seeing connectivity on defense? Um, I thought the middle of the second quarter, we got a couple of stops and we just couldn't find anything on the offensive end. Um, like I said earlier, I don't know if you guys caught it. We were down 17, but it felt like 40. But I thought, just told the guys, we just got to chip, chip away at it and make it respectable going into half, and we did. And then we, then we, got, then we got some you know, offensive momentum going in that second half, you know, scored you know, 66 points. A lot of good plays. I thought Danny was, Danny was huge. Uh, he didn't have a good first half, but he came back and bounced back and had some big shots and big rebounds in that second. And, and with, with Rui, you, you guys have put him in space against some pretty good guys the last three or four games. Where, when did you see or what are you seeing from him in terms of not just taking on the challenge, but being effective in the challenge? Well, it's, he's been a big part of us getting better on the defensive end. And it's, it's nothing against that he wasn't trying. It's just he was still – trying to figure it out the game you know it's for young players I've, I've said it many times he hasn't even got 82 game season in with the games that he missed last year with the lockout or not the lockout COVID and then yeah. you know, being out a few times this year but defensively I say it Brad says it to him Russell says it to him he's the only guy on our team that can guard one through five and that's a that's a luxury to have and so when we want to play small uh, he can guard. He can guard bigger players, and they have to make a decision. They came back with key. So uh, I thought I thought when Rui can really lock in, which he has, uh, we can be a better defensive team. It's not all on him. Russell has to do his job and Brad himself. But every guy, every team has that one guy that can switch multiple different play or a style of players, not just you know big guys, not just three point shooters, not just drivers. Rui can guard a variety of style of, of play. Ava. Scott, what um, feels different about the end of games to you guys now? Well, we've been together, you know. Um, we, we lost a, quite a few. And I, I felt, unfortunately, um, all that happened earlier, we didn't, we didn't, weren't able to get some learning momentum. You know, when you lose close games, you watch films, you talk to guys individually, you, you try to help them out, and then, you know, you, you don't play for a, a, a bunch of weeks. But I think now we're, we understand Brad, Brad has to deliver and make plays for us. Russell has to set them up. Russell has a hot hand attacking. He does that. And then guys that are open have to step up and shoot. And I thought that's what we did down the stretch. Defensively, we made more, more mistakes in that last three minutes of the fourth quarter, then we probably made the entire second half combined. But those are those are things that we have to get better. But you know, at least our offense was making some plays down the stretch. Yeah, you've mentioned a lot that you're uh, kind of once the threes start falling, things are going to be a lot easier on offense. But obviously, you won this one with just I think it was nine threes. What's that? Yeah. Um, what's that mean? What do you think that that says? Yeah, I, I think the, the thing that I like about our offense, you know, we haven't made threes. Um, I know we're going to make them. I've talked about them. I even hate talking about it now, but we don't just settle for threes. We're not, it's not like we're taking 40, you know, 40 something threes. You know, we weren't making a lot of threes, but we didn't take many in the first quarter, but we get to the free throw line. We got attackers that get to the free throw line. You know, Russell, Russell gets to the free throw line when we, when he doesn't get to the free throw line, gets us in the bonus with, you know, two or three fouls early in the, in the quarter and allows the other guys to get free throws. Um, but I like how the offense played, but I like how the defense, I like how we played. We played a two way game against a, a team that was angry, a team that's very talented with one of the best players ever. Fred. Scott, these, these last couple of weeks, Russell has, just basically stop taking threes and it's not just because he's taking shots at the paint more. He's just, he's basically stopped taking those jump shots. Is that, is that a conscious change? Is that just because of health? What, what do you make of that? Well, I, I twist his arm a few times. I, you know, I, he knows, he knows he's a good three point shooter when his feet are set, the swing, swing threes. When we can get the, when we, we can get the chase started when guys are scrambling. 
but we don't need we don't need his pull up threes. He's he's not that that's not his heat check shot. But he he does so many good things for us, and and a lot of the things uh, that he does for us is not on the stat sheet. It's in the locker room. It's in our morning shoot around. It's our breakfast meetings. It's in you know in on the bus, and those are the things that it's huge for our young guys to listen and hear and see his intensity. Uh, like I've said many times, this is not, this is, this is a game that he loves, but this is his, this is his livelihood. This is his job. He wants his family to be proud of how he plays. And I think when you see, when our young players see that, they understand that I got to bring it. I don't want to disappoint and let, let my team. Thanks, Fred. It's my fault. Clearly. Definitely, definitely I, Fred's fault. I just want to make sure that everybody goes to bed at six in the morning. That's all. Matt, just but make I, up the quotes. Just everybody's just, past their deadline. Just just have him release a press release. He can Oh Allison. Ready. Allison can get yeah. it done. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight AM in Israel, so we got time here. Oh, you're good. <laughs> It's the only time of the season that you guys are on the, the better half of the timing here. Hey, Matt. Yeah, that, that's a sweet spot for us. Let's, <laughs> let's just have him call in from a phone or something. Or, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what to do at this point. Yeah, let me, I'll text Scott. Yeah, let Scott decide. Is it, is it a Zoom issue, internet issue? Do you guys know the answer to that question? No idea. The Heat had the same trouble two days ago in the Staples Center. Mm. That's a Staples problem. So we'll be up all night tomorrow too then. So that was it for coach. Um, we'll try again with the players here in a minute.
my sources on the ground say there is IT help in Staples Center. So hopefully we get this figured out. Christmas got it for the tie. No, and the wizard. Christmas got it for the tie. What's up, Denny? Hey, hey, everybody. Ready? Yeah, one more. 
All right, uh, Fred, go ahead. Matt, can you spotlight him? Am I good? Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Um, hey, Danny. Um, mm -hmm. Late in the game, a couple possessions, you end up on LeBron one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter. I mean, what, what are you thinking in those moments? What's, what's your strategy when you're guarding a guy like that? Uh, first of all, I, st I, st I stick to the scouting report. Oh, we have great uh, scouting report, and, and our coaches uh, do a great job. That's first of all. Uh, second of all, like I said, I I'm, not, I'm not afraid of anybody, so I'm just going to take the challenge in e every time. So for me, um, I take the, the player I'm guarding, I'm taking him seriously, like, equal. So, I mean, um, just stepped up, took the challenge, uh, played my defense, and I guess he, he had a hard time, so it's good. Thanks, Danny. Welcome. Neil. Hey, Denny. Uh, before this game, you were having a little bit of a slump from three in the fourth quarter. You know, you knocked down two really big three-point shots. Is it just completely like, you know, forget about the past and always move on to the next shot? Definitely. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about uh, the next game, the next shot. Um... I'm, I'm doing a lot of repetitions, so I'm, I'm, I'm going in the gym, shooting the amount of shots that, I'm, that I need to make that are going to make me be calm. I mean, for a shooter, you have, I mean, you have situations and you have, like, periods that the shot is, is less efficient and you, do, you need to do things, um, uh, other things better. So, I mean, but I, I'm not focusing. If I miss the shot, I'm, I'm going to shoot uh, every time I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm confident in my shot. And uh, sometimes some periods it will be less efficient, but um, I'm gonna practice and I'm gonna maintain it hopefully, so. DA. I think you're still muted there, DA, sorry. Sounds like it's my first Zoom apparently. Danny, what is the, uh, what's the process like of building a, a kind of, personal scouting report on guys you're trying to defend as you play them for the first time, or maybe if you see tape on them before the game, how are you kind of processing and putting that in your memory bank? Oh, he likes to do this. I need to take this away. Um, I definitely stick to the scouting report. Uh, I try to learn every player and what he does on the court. Um, it's not easy as a rookie because it's your first time here. Yeah. So you, you don't know everybody in the league. You, I mean, you know the big names and what they do. But um, in the end of the day, on the court, I'm, I'm just reading. Like, I'm, I'm sticking to what a coach tells me. And um, I'm just playing, like, with my defensive skills. So I'm just reading. Um, I'm sending him uh, to his weak hand most of the time. But I'm just playing. I'm just taking the challenge. I'm, I'm, I'm defending with my heart. You know, in the end of the day, it's, it's your heart defending, not, not, not anything else. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Yaron for a few questions in Hebrew. Hey, Danny, my name. Boker Tov. Boker Tov. Yes, you have a country that came in the morning and you built it to the end of the day. So, again, all the thanks. And tell me a little bit about what is going on in your head when you האמת היא שאני לא חושב כל כך הרבה, אתה יודע, אני לא, <laughs> אני, אני, אני מעדיף שלא לחשוב. <laughs> מבחינתי, אני בטוח בזריקה שלי, אני, אתה יודע, הייתי פנוי לגמרי, אז זרקתי. אתה <laughs> יודע, אני עובד על זה. אני, אני נשאר הרבה בעולם, אני זורק, אני עושה את, את, את הכמות זריקות שאני צריך, ואתה יודע, יכול להיות שנכנסתי לאיזושהי תקופה שהיא קצת פחות טובה בקריאה, אבל אני, אני לגמרי בטוח בקריאה שלי, אני... אני עוד גם בשנה הראשונה, עוד, עוד לא תמיד הכל יהיה יציב מבחינתי, אבל uh, כיף, כיף לקלוע, השלושה שהיא חשובה בשביל uh, הקבוצה, בשביל uh, לעזור לה, לחברים uh, לנצח, ועשינו עבודה מעולה, אז uh, אני, אני אישית שמח. ب, בחילוף, כשנכנסת שם בסוף, uh, אני חושב שסקוט רצה ללכת על הרכב uh, נמוך. Mm -hmm. uh, הוא, הוא אמר לכם שההוראה היא כדי ש... בשביל החילופים, לי, לי מהצד זה היה נראה כדי שאם יהיה חילוף על לברון, אז אתה תקבל את לברון. אני, אני, אני חושב שכן, אני, אני לא ממש בטוח. Um, אני לא ממש בטוח um, מה, מה הייתה ההחלטה, אבל um, כנראה שהוא רצה ללכת על הרכב נמוך. 
הכניס אותי, וכן, הייתי, הייתי מוכן להחליף על לברון, ידעתי שיכול להיות שיהיה אופציה שאני, שאני נכנסתי בשביל שאני אהיה לברון, אז כן הייתי מוכן לזה, חוץ מזה, אני לא, לא כל כך בטוח, אני לא, גם לא כל כך הבנתי, אבל אתה יודע, היה מה שהיה. מאט, אתה רוצה להתרגק שם? Yeah, sorry, just real quick. Uh, Russell Westbrook is going to speak in the secondary room if anybody wants to jump over there while Danny's finishing up here. Okay, thanks, Matt. So, Hazara, Danny, one more question from me, and then we'll move on to other friends. In the end of the game, that means in the end of the game, you came in the last few minutes, right? You took the rebound last year from Kuzma in the game. לא מקוזמה, כאילו כן, קוזמה זרק. כן, כן, כן. ותאר את התחושה שם באותו רגע, זרקת את הכדור למעלה, בי הגיע אליך לחיבוק. איך הרגשתי? הרגשתי מדהים, אתה יודע, ניצחון אדיר בשבילנו, אבל... רועי אמר לי לזרוק את הכדור למעלה, כאילו לא ידעתי כמה זמן נשאר על השעון זריקות, אני חשבתי שיבואו לעשות עליי פאול. לא הבנתי שיש שנייה, ואני צריך לזרוק את הכדור למעלה, ואז ראיתי שזה כאילו 0-0, אז זרקתי את זה למעלה, כאילו. אבל כיף, כאילו, אתה יודע, להיות בחוויות כאלה, לנצח עם כל החברים, זה מדהים. מעולה. פיני? היי דני, בוקר טוב. אהלן, פיני, מה קורה? אהלן, קודם כל, אתה נראה שאתה עומד מאחורי המילים שלך, שאתה אומר שאתה לא מפחד מאף אחד, גם בצד ההגנתי, גם בצד ההתקפי, והיום אתה, מה שנקרא, bounce back ברבע האחרון, ובאמת נכנסת למשחק ברבע האחרון נהדר, ואתה אומר הרבה שאתה עובד, גם, אתה יודע, נותן את האקסטרה עבודה גם על הזריקה, גם על המשחק שלך, כדי באמת להגיע בסופו של דבר למשחקים האלה ולשפר את היציבות לאורך זמן. אז ספר לנו קצת. על המיינדסט הזה שאתה מצליח לשמור דווקא במשחקים פחות טובים, שנותן לך את האפשרות, אתה יודע, לקפוץ קדימה ולהגיע למשחק כזה מוכן ברבע האחרון ולעשות הבדל. זה לא פשוט, זה לא פשוט. אני, אני תמיד מנסה להיות חיובי. גם אם יש לי משחקים טובים וגם אם יש לי משחקים רעים, אני תמיד אעבוד על הדברים שאני צריך לעבוד עליהם. אני תמיד אשפר את המשחק שלי. לא משנה, לא משנה כמה דקות אני משחק על, על, על הפרקט. ברגע שאני כן נכנס ויש לי את ההזדמנויות האלה, אז אני פשוט משחק הכי חזק שלי. ויהיו לי פעמים שיהיו לי הזדמנויות... עוד פעם, ל- לעשות כמעט סן ניצחון על הלייקרס, ויהיו פעמים שאני לא אזרוק בכלל, ואני אני, אני, אני מוכן לזה. מבחינתי, אה, אני שנה ראשונה פה, אני עדיין לומד דברים, אני עדיין, אני יודע, אני עדיין באמת נכנס אה, לעניינים, עדיין לא כל כך יציב, אבל אה, בסופו של דבר אני, אה, אני מוכן לכל, לכל רגע, אני מוכן לכל פעם שאני דורך על הפרקט. אני עובד מאוד 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 קשה ואני מנסה להישאר חיובי עם כל הטירוף הזה מסביב. ואני חושב שזה עוזר לי, יש לי משפחה שתומכת מאחוריי ואנשים שאוהבים אותי מאחוריי וזה עוזר לי המון, כן. חברים, אנחנו חייבים לסיים כי ברדלי ביל נכנס. סורי, בן, ראיתי שרק הצטרפת, אבל אין מה לעשות. אז תודה, תודה, דני. All right, we can go ahead and get started here. Let some more people in. Uh, Quentin, go ahead. What's up, B? Cool. Uh, first and foremost, can you take us through those clutch shots you hit, the up and under specifically? Because at one point, it looked like you lost the ball, but you re-corralled it. and then did what you did up there. Just take us through those clutch shots you had to hit and what you guys were looking to achieve down the stretch. Uh, first person I learned to say was Jesus Christ. Uh, the coach really wanted me to uh, make a play going downhill at Gasol. Uh, on the upper under specifically, yeah. I, I definitely, I lost the ball initially and uh, it was better. I actually regained possession of the ball and I seen Kuz jump before I did and I know remember in the early in the game, he actually blocked my shot on the fast break. And so uh, I just hit him with an upper under. I know I always, I work on that a lot. So I was, I was real frustrated because I didn't close it out in regulation like I should have. So I just played with more aggression in overtime. Five straight wins. How does it feel? Different. It feels different. It feels different in a, in a great way. You know, it's, uh, 
feels great, but at the same time, you know, we're we still haven't done a damn thing, you know, and we realize that we keep telling ourselves that, you know, we're still hungry for more. You can go ahead and uh, you know, we still have, you know, games to make up. We still have bad habits that we gotta, you know, correct and be better at, but you know, you, you never negate the success that we do have. So we're happy about it, but at the same time, we still have a, a humble like approach. We put our hat hard hats on, come back ready to go tomorrow. Appreciate you, B. Ava. Um, Brad, last game you spoke about how huge it oh, did we lose Brad? We lost Brad. Way to go, Ava. No, I'm not taking credit for that. <laughs> I'm no Fred. It's still your fault for it. <laughs> it's still Fred's fault. It's always my fault. That's fine. I'll take it. I can take the hit. You can't skip me though when he comes back, Matt. Yeah, we'll come back since he didn't actually answer anything. The, the, I can speak for my company when I'd say they would be fine if you skipped the Washington Post. That would be fine. <laughs> DA, can you, could you set your person straight here, please? I can neither confirm nor deny Fred's statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it, was, it wasn't Russ who we lost because he would not have come back. So. He would have been gone. It, was just, it would have just been the sunglasses sitting in his chair. Right. Spinning in the chair. <laughs> about this rush shit. Yeah, look, I'm still sitting here, man. Hey, that <laughs> yes, almost thank you, Brad. <laughs> I almost put a rust on y'all ass, man. <laughs> um, All right, Avery. Brad, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was wondering. Last game, you mentioned how um, great it was to kind of had a hand in the win. Um, you had so many guys come up with the right plays at exactly the right moment tonight. Can you speak a little bit to? Role players, everybody kind of pitching in tonight. Oh man, we we had a practice a couple of weeks ago, and that was that was the gist of you know defining our roles and what everybody's you know distinguished job is on this team, and you know everybody bought into that. You know that's what we need for everybody to chip in in order for us to win. Uh, it's just really for guys just being ready, being ready when coach calls your number. You know, playing hard is something that. You know, we should do automatically. We get paid to do that, you know, but playing with IQ, being ready to go, defending, knowing personnel when you come into the game, like these are all things in the areas of growth that we've been having the last couple of games, and it's been great. Uh, like Denny staying engaged, guarding Braun pretty well down the stretch, hitting a big three fours, DB the same thing. Uh, Rolo was big down low for us tonight. Russ was absolutely terrific. So, and then Rui made some big plays too, guarding Braun, being able to finish uh, at the rim. Uh, big three in the corner from him too. So it was it was a lot of plays that we, we made down the stretch, and that's just from guys staying engaged in the game, uh, guys on the bench just keeping guys engaged, cheering each other on, and it's, it's just a trickle down the floor. Brad. Brad, it feels like the last few games, a theme with you guys is you're all you're all kind of mentioning Rui's progression. Um, and and I'm curious how how specifically have you seen him? grow as a defender what what specifically do you think he's doing better right now challenging himself i think that's really the biggest difference uh it's it's one thing for you know for fred for you to write about Rui or for me to get on him but for somebody to individually you know want to challenge themselves that's a whole different you know ball game a whole different animal we're dealing with so he's taking on that that challenge himself he puts that pressure on himself and uh, and we hold him to that standard like i said you know last couple games like he's he says he can guard one through five. And so he goes out there and does that. And, you know, we trust it in his abilities. We trust in his, his versatility. And, you know, it's, it's just been a, a great and beautiful thing to see. You know, the game is starting to slow down for him. And, uh, you know, he's been, like you said, he's been making the right plays for us at the right time. DA? Brad, you know, on the schedule, there's games that, are more winnable than others, let's say. <laughs> um, when you yeah. when you uh, when you come into their place okay. and they lost and they're mad and they have every reason to play and they jump on you and you still come back and win the game, is that a different win than other wins you could have? Other wins you might be piling up? Uh, yes and no, uh, because at the same time, you know, we don't worry about who's on the other side. Uh, I think that's been kind of our mindset the last couple of games. We realized the other team has great players. You know, they may be a great team, but we are a great team too. We can be great, you know, if we play the right way. And we've been doing that. And it's just 
us staying consistent, you know, with how we play, not getting caught up in the other team. Like, granted, LeBron's probably the best ever touch of basketball, you know, but they haven't won as a team. You know, they lost the last two. So we knew coming into the game that they would be over aggressive. We knew that they would try to get out of transition, and they did that. Uh, but we did a good job of just staying poised uh, and responding well, getting stops when we needed to, forcing them, keeping them out of the paint. Honestly, we forced them to take a lot of tough shots down in the second half. And uh, and I think offensively, we kind of just got what we wanted. Did you? When did you see the the connectivity on defense start to take shape with your squad? And I don't mean tonight. I just mean the last couple of weeks. I mean, it, you can start four, five, what, five games ago. I mean, our first from our first street win. You know, it's. Uh, it was just a different mindset that we had and it flowed into Denver, it flowed into our West Coast trip. And it was just, it was just, it was perfect for us. You know, we, we were playing with energy. We were playing smart, you know, we closed out a game, you know, and I think that's what we've been doing the last five. We've been closing out, you know, early on in the year, we wouldn't do that. Uh, we would have mishaps here and there, give up big plays. Brandon, we still did that, you know, tonight. I damn sure did, but uh, I think our growth is just us staying engaged, being poised in big moments, not getting rattled. And, and, Execute on the other end too. Matt Paris. Yeah. Hey Brad, was the, the practice that you guys all defined your roles? Was that the same practice that Rui said he could guard one through five? And so, if so, like, what was it about that practice that was so beneficial to you guys? How helpful was it to have a conversation like that? Uh. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, whether it's our team, any team, little league team. So it's great for everybody to know what it is that their role and job is, you know. Um, and there's it's no knock on our abilities and what we're doing, but it's it's what we need as a team uh, and what we need from certain guys. And, uh, and that's all it was. It was a conversation. It was nothing more than that. I'm not going into detail about it because it wasn't that type of party. But uh, we, uh, we, we got down to the gist of what, we require out of everybody and Rui challenged himself and we hold him to that, that standard. He's doing a hell of a job. Of it. And, you know, you guys don't have a lot of time to practice as it is. So when you guys have a moment like that, I mean, with this condensed schedule, does that make it even more valuable? For sure. You know, because at the end of the day, we, we all know what we need to do better. We all know we all need to play better. Uh, and I think the beauty of it is that we all want to contribute. You know, it's not like guys don't want to be here. Guys don't want to be engaged. Guys don't want to get better. Uh, we actually have guys who cheer each other on who compete against each other. And we all want to just be better as a team. We all want to make the right play. We all want to make the winning play. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it requires guys to do certain things in their role. And we, we just hash those out, you know, on both ends of the floor. And uh, I guess you could say it's a testament to how we're playing. Thanks, man. All right, we'll finish up with Christos. Hello, Brad. Congratulations on the win. What uh, What is the aspect of your game that uh, working better in the last five games and you have five straight wins? And also, what it means for you, the celebration uh, at uh, during the overtime that you hit your shot, your your chest? It was kind of a, a personal uh, redemption or stuff like, or something like that for you. Yeah, uh, so I would say defensively is where a lot of our change came and it's just more being more consistent on that end you know being able to guard guys taking the challenge rebounding the ball uh so i would say our defense is really the biggest thing that stepped up for us as a team and then uh the player you're referring to i was beating my chest because i was a little pissed off at myself uh granted i just scored on that play but i feel like the whole second half i was kind of letting them off the hook and missing shots and i wasn't and I tricked off the, you know, the game winner at the end of the, at the end of regulation. So that was just more or less like be lock in, like get going, like come on, this is this is what you do, this is what you're built for, type time. So there's just a little self encouragement. What's the potential of this team this season? What'd you say? What What is the real potential of this team? Uh, I mean, we, we have a lot of potential, you know, uh, we're only scratching the surface. Like I said before, we still have a lot of things we have to get better at. Um, still got some bad habits here and there, but you know, we're, we're, we're a playoff team for sure. You know, that's our biggest goal is to make the playoffs and try to make a run from there. Um, uh, you know, we're not going to sit here and aim, aim high for the stars. Like granted we do, uh, but every team in the league does too, you know, and only one team wins at the end of the day. Our, our, we take it a day at a time and get better. 
like tomorrow we got a tough Clipper team, you know, so we, we got to have, we got to have our eyes and ears and bodies ready for tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Brad. Appreciate you. Thanks guys.